Oh, man. I can't wait. Well, okay. So you're telling me we're going to save this. You're going to save the anger for, like, the end or something? Like, I <laughs> We'll see where, the, where where it comes up at. That's that's the biggest thing. I, I, it could, it could, it could uh, manifest anywhere. Okay. Thomas, do you want to say hi real quick to Jermail? You got to come over here. All right. Go back in with mom, all right? Because you're already, you're already in, in the deal here. You either got to come and say hi or you got to go. Okay. First things first. You're yeah. a gym owner. What is your gym that you own, uh, Jermail? Functional Fitness Applied Strength and Conditioning. It's in Cleveland. Uh, the shirt. You're wearing the shirt. Hey, can you throw me the... Uh, yeah, yeah right. got it on right there. I like that you, you're branding. You're good with the branding. Now, listen, yeah. I was going to start this interview. My guy, Josh uh, Sasby, I think you and Tommy might have been teammates for a year or two, right? Yeah. Uh, or he might have been the year after after me. Okay. He's maybe the year after you, but his, his brother owns this, Barbarian Apparel, right? He's one okay, of my yeah. Got it? You with me? Yeah, yeah. He sent me. Ohio cast <laughs> face masks. Yeah, I see that. And I was going to start the interview out with this on. <laughs> but listen, I didn't want to see the iPad or whatever device you're on go like a frisbee. Fling, fling all the way yeah, the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wall. I didn't want that. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that, uh, Jermail. I was more prepared for, uh, you know, a civil conversation, but, um, but listen, so we're in the yep. middle of this COVID thing, and you, you're yep. a small business owner, and you own um, it's it's functional fitness. Yeah, applied strength and conditioning. Okay, so you know, I just want to get into what makes you qualified to do that. Do you still you used to run it with your brother, right? Is that is that right? Yeah, I still do. Okay, so you and your brother, you guys are from Akron, Ohio, right? Yep. Yep. Where are you guys from uh, in Akron? Uh, West Akron, right, right, um, right by fire. So, I mean, we, I, I, I grew up a mile and a half from my high school. So, um, fires high school, if you remember, I don't know what it's like now, but it used to hold division two districts there. That's where, that's where I went to high school. They moved that, I want to say to Alliance. The fire okay. district's now an Alliance. But or if you went to the Bill D tournament ever, that's where, that's where I went to yep. high school. They still have the D's there. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So the thing I was going to say with you was, uh, you guys grew up in Akron. How yeah. far are you guys? How far is your? Because uh, it's Firestone Park, isn't it? Isn't that like? No. So Firestone Park is South Akron. Um, Firestone uh, was essentially the that was the rubber capital, or Akron was a rubber capital, Palmer capital. So everything is named Firestone because um, that was where the big factories were. So Firestone Park is more South Side, okay. but Firestone High School is uh, West Side. Okay, got it. So you guys are West Side. So you guys yep. are probably what are you? Fifteen minutes from Medina. Uh, yep, about fifteen twenty. Yeah, so you guys are west west side. Fairlawn, Fairlawn's just yep. north of you. Yep. And like Buckdo would be south, right? Uh, that would be yeah, going like uh southeast. Got it's, it. It's, okay. it's, it's not too far. Got it. So, th 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 but those are you're from an Akron City School. Yeah, public school. Yep. Public school, right? So, um, you're quickly your background, okay? In um, wrestling was when did you even start wrestling, Jamal? Ninth grade. You started wrestling in ninth grade. <laughs> oh yeah, ninth grade. So ridiculous. Yeah. So you started wrestling in ninth grade, um, and then did you? You never played high school football, correct? I did not. No. This this is amazing. <laughs> Amazing! Your story. I tell your story to people. I'm like, this guy was a Division One American in wrestling. Oh. He played in the NFL for two seasons, right? As a practice player. One. Well, one and some change, wasn't it? Yeah, one and some change, like one and a half. Two. That's two. Yeah, yeah it's close. No, it's two. No, think about it. That's two. You were in there for two calendar years. Am I wrong? Yeah, actually. Yeah. Years. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, that's two years. It might not be two full seasons. It might not be two full seasons, but it's two years. Do that. Do that. So, you know, I talk to people about that a lot. Didn't you actually play in the band? I did. I did. Orchestra. You played in the orchestra. Played in the orchestra, yep. Oh, my God. It's a different, Zeb. I played string instruments. Your story, you're just such a different guy, man. 
and I understand why you're training people now because you're such a, you're such a late bloomer. But the yeah. big thing I think that the NFL really liked about you was obviously your size, but size, mm-hmm. guy, big, gigantic guys that are athletic are not a dime a dozen, but they're sure. more common now than they were in the, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, look, just real quick, you know, you had like a, like a bootleg pro day. I remember you telling me about the, you didn't have like a real pro day. What was your pro day even like? I had a, so it was, it was more so like a, a workout um, organized. So I had two, I had two different teams come to Kent two different times. And then I went to them like a bunch of the times, but the ones that were at Kent were put on by the um, Patriots and then the Dolphins. Those are my, those are my two there. Um, so those were the two there. Um, Brian Ferentz at the time was the assistant offensive line coach for New England. But the Ferentz family, Kirk Ferentz, who's obviously head coach of Iowa, are huge wrestling fans. So the idea of him vouching for me, he saw me at the NCAA. So they have – they sit in the Iowa section, the Ferentz's. So he was able to say, hey, I watched you wrestle. You know, at that time, it was like a couple months ago. I watched you wrestle a couple months ago. You know, so he basically put me through my, uh, my workout. And basically, um, the Miami guys came a couple weeks later, and they did the same thing. But, um, yeah, that was, that was how that whole thing kind of got started. And that was, that was basically just took off from, um, from there. And Ferenc was with the Patriots at that point in time? Yeah, I think, yeah, he was, he was, um, he moved from tight end, or he was tight end coach, moved over to offensive, assistant offensive line um, under Dante Skarnacki. I think he's the um, offensive coordinator now for Iowa, I want to say. Yeah, Um, yeah, he's an assistant at Iowa now, his son. Yeah, so so now he's at uh, Iowa, but yeah, that was uh, essentially the, um, the, uh, the um, communication I had there. Okay. So it's crazy. Um, I know that the Patriots do a lot of unconventional stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously bringing a guy in who never played a down of organized high school or college football. That's yeah. a stretch. Let's just go with that. Can we, can you okay. agree that's a stretch? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a big, that's a big gamble. Um, maybe not a big gamble for them, but it was a gamble. Yeah. And, and I remember talking to you about it and you said the big thing was your hip flexibility, mm-hmm. and your ability to squat and mm-hmm. how you could move laterally. You did shuttles. You were like one of the higher endish rookies in the draft class. You weren't even a draftable guy, I don't even think. Right. I was undrafted, yeah. You were an undrafted guy, but you did stuff a lot better than these guys who probably signed twenty, thirty million dollar contracts, right? Yeah, this is this is true. This is this is a hundred percent true. What was it? What were the exercises? What were the things that set you apart from everybody, Jermail? Um, I think um the um my Mobility in my ankle, knee, and hips was key. Um, I was I, I was a pretty good knee bender, not a waist bender, you know. And that's what you will hear a lot of times with the big guys. You get tired, you bend the waist. But I mean, I was I was able to repeatedly kind of be able to bend my knees, keep my torso upright, things like that. And most guys were able to kind of fatigue after that. So I think it was things like that. And I knew how to basically distribute force pretty pretty well. You know, for, for, for if you're run blocking out of a stance, it's no different than taking a double leg or, you know, a, a high crotch. It's, it's the same thing. So that's one of the things that I think it was an easy transition for me. And I could do it like, you know, I could do it all day, every day. For them. And that was where some guys struggled. You know, I was like, oh, it's not that bad. That's crazy because, like, I know they're putting you through these workouts. I've gone I, – I did some of your guys' hill workouts and some of the stuff where they would torture you on the front hill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Matt Hill, Josh Moore, and Coach Anderson, they would torture <laughs> you up this hill, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And body carries and fried carries and oh, all yeah. these different just plate carries, plate pushes. Plate pushes <laughs> was your punishment, wasn't it, in the field house? That was ours. Yeah, man. Uh, plate pushes were were the punishment for any sort of infraction. <laughs> um, any sort of infraction. I don't care what it was. You were plate pushing. Mostly if it was like some sort of tardiness. That's – that those are the plate get ups, if you remember those. Oh, the get ups where you had to get up get with your back with the plate holding it. Yes, it sir. Above your head, right? Yep, yep. Madness. And, and it, here's the crazy thing it prepares you for two years in the NFL. Now, you did two, the, the two seasons that you were in, you were in two mm-hmm. separate seasons. You were yeah. a practice player one year for the Patriots, 
and then the other year was with Kansas City, right? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I was, yes, that's correct. Kansas City was, was my longest stint. I was just there brief. I was there briefly. Now, I guess relatively in the time span, I was there briefly for New England, but I was there. I spent a bulk of my time in Kansas City. Okay. So you're in with New England. You're in with them for however long. You're in with them for a month or two, right? Uh, I was like four. four. You're with four months. You're with them. Yeah. Dude, how finely tuned and well oiled of a machine are they? Yeah, dude, that was it's they are, and it's like, dude, that was <laughs> in hindsight. So you got from an X's and O's standpoint, it's like a double edged sword. It's like the best education you could ever get, but it's like walking in as a fifth grader trying to do calculus. It's like, wait, what? And so everybody's highly cerebral in their in their in their unique in their processing and the ability to like deduce, you know what needs to happen it's real fast and it's just like so then going from them to uh kansas city um was a lot easier uh because i'm not saying it was dummy down but just i was used to a higher pace and struggling immensely to um be able to go to kansas city and like okay i've seen this before this makes sense it's a little slower pace but um yeah they are they are as advertised like, like i said i was Never really too nervous in Kansas City most days, but I was nervous every day in New England. Okay. Like in, New, in New England, um, no Aaron Hernandez, right? You missed him, didn't you? Yeah, I missed him. Uh, you missed uh, Aaron Hernandez. Him Brady was there. Hmm? Um, Julian Edelman was there when you were there, wasn't he? Yeah, he was there. Yep. Okay. And he's a Kent Stater. He was the quarterback. You guys were actually in school together when he was at Kent State, right? You are correct. Yep. So you might have seen him a couple of times at the field house and stuff when you guys were working out. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. Um, That's so crazy, <laughs> man. And that guy, you know what? They're so good at doing unconventional things and like picking you up is like one of those unconventional things. And I think that yeah. that's obviously what sets them apart, right? I mean, they just yeah. do so much unconventional things that don't um, really jive with what a lot of a lot of other people are doing. Also, it, it had, and they and they would do it the next year because next year they would pick up John Wise from Illinois. He went there after me. Um, and Steve Neal was still there for both of those years. So it was always good to have him, um, to be able to talk with him and him and provide, shed insight, and, you know, take you in and kind of, but look, man, this is, I get it. It's a challenging. This is what you should do. This is what, this, that, and other. So Steven was, was good to deal with, huh? He, he was, he. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very, you know, for me, you know, most of the guys there probably knew him as a football player, but I knew him as a, you know, I knew the wrestler. I'm like, oh shit, that's Steve Neal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. I was watching VHS tapes of him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He beat Brock Lesnar in the NCAA finals, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Thinking. Right. Oh. You know, I was like, oh, shit, that's Stephen Neal right there. You know. And then, so your whole role is a practice player, and they keep five practice players, right? Who can be activated if someone goes down, right? Isn't that the deal? Uh, it's nine. You get nine, nine practice squad guys. Um, okay, and then, was yeah. five then, or is it nine now? Was it, or has it always been nine? It was nine. You got 53 plus, plus the nine guys. Okay. So any of those nine guys could be activated. They were just like, those are the best, next best utility player. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you, you know, if you're down guys or this, and these guys are next ready guys to go in. So the crazy thing about all that is when I look at it, um, you know, you're, you're um, I, I was talking to Tim Anderson. And Tim Anderson and I, he went to Clyde High School. I went to Carver. He said you can only be a practice player for two years. Was it the same way when you were there? You can only be a practice player for two years. After two years, they either have to activate you or cut you, right? Is that, is that correct? Yeah, if you're on the same team, yeah. Like, if you're with the um, same franchise, yeah. So, but, but, again, technically, being the Packer squad is like them cutting you, and then they basically bring you back as a quad Packer squad player. But, yeah crazy if the nfl works like that and you were yeah, in them you know what i mean and you did it all from being a wrestler that's the wildest thing that blows yeah me. yeah no, that's that's the no organized football experience that's crazy jermail yeah no it, nope but like i said the benefit of having my initial exposure with being the patriots is like you had some of the best education you could have than moving to kansas city um it was like okay i could kind of hold my own there um a, a little bit better and that was that was kind of like that was the best thing that could have happened in that term like, okay well it's like it's not um 
it's not as complex. I remember that. It, although we had Charlie Weiss um, um, as the offensive coordinator um, coming back in the start of the 2010 season, but yeah. Okay. Any of the guys on the Kansas City roster um, when you were on it, were they on the roster? And was there anybody left from when you were on the roster to what, that won the Super Bowl championship this year? Nobody I know. Um, because there's a whole regime change. That's about yeah, it. I mean, uh, it's, it's the NFL. And you gotta think that was almost ten years ago, or nine, eight, nine years ago now. You know, yeah. so crazy, uh, isn't it? The, yeah, a lot of those guys that were there are already, you know, they've already, they've already, they're out of the league. You know, but the brutal sport, dude. Let's just get. I mean, yeah. it's it's. They say the linemen have the equivalent to however many plays they have from scrimmage. Let's say they have fifty plays from scrimmage. It's like fifty mm -hmm. car accidents. Yeah, you know, it's – yeah, it is. It is – it's different. It's different. You got to be – you got to be built for, for that. But um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's fun, but, it's, it's, it, you know, it can take a toll on you. Jermail, you know, you're training all these you, – you train all levels of athletes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, a lot of people come from the perspective, I was this or I was that. And then you just have some people who have a good understanding. Maybe they weren't great athletes, but they have a great mind, right? Like – no. Your NFL coaches, 90-plus percent of your football coaches in the NFL, they never played NFL football. No. You're coming from a position as a gym owner and a personal trainer as – I was a D1 All-American, played two seasons in the NFL as a practice player. You know, I mean, you're at all – dude, that's amazing. But, um, you know, like, you're coming from this position of, look what I was able to do. Mm -hmm. Does, is it a great marketing tool for you whenever you're going out there and is it easy to bring clientele in? Uh, initially, I didn't really use it um, at first, um, but it is, it's always, so it's a great opportunity for a mentorship because you're able to provide insight to like high school athletes, middle school athletes, even college athletes that they may not um, get from anybody else. You, could, you know, and that's one of the big things I wish I had more of. And I think that's the kind of person I am. If I have like a mentor or somebody who can provide me, like, look, man, follow these steps. I think I, I fare I fare better with that. So, if anything, my journey has now provided me opportunity to be able to reciprocate that to the next generation of athlete. And like, look, you don't have to be uneasy or unsure. I kind of already walked this path a little bit for you already. This is what you could expect. This is this is what you need to do. This is kind of like where your mind should be as far as preparation and routine and all that kind of stuff. I think that's one of the best things that um, I could provide um, uh, younger athletes these days is that kind of sort of experience of I've kind of already done it, you know, in that, in that, um, that standpoint. Does everybody who knows you played, you know, some NFL football, Chiefs, Patriots, does everybody think you're a millionaire? Um, no, no one thinks I'm, no one thinks good. I'm a millionaire. That's good. <laughs> no, one, they no, one, no one thinks I'm a millionaire. League minimum, right? Is it, did, they, did you make league minimum? No, practice squad gets uh, half of that, which is still a substantial amount of money, but half practice squad gets half of that. What's um, league minimum? 200 grand or something? Oh, dude, I, you know what? I don't even know what it was. All right, so I can put it in perspective. In 2009, it was like $710,000. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, that was that was league minimum in two thousand nine, um, and then you cut that in half, and that's typically what a practice squad guy makes. Oh my <laughs> like god, I didn't know that. That's that's, that's but that's two thousand nine. I don't know what it is now. I couldn't, couldn't tell you. Oh my gosh, that's. I mean, it, it's it's to it's reasonable to assume it's higher than that now, but it was seven hundred ten thousand dollars. Maybe not in this economy. Maybe not in this economy though. Yeah, maybe, maybe not, yeah it's it's a little iffy now. If you if you're one of those guys <laughs> now, we don't we don't know. But there, I, I remember it was seven hundred ten or seven hundred twenty thousand dollars was the league minimum for sixteen games. Okay. All right. So quickly, you know, obviously, I coming from me, you need to market more, in my opinion. Okay. NFL and the NCAA Division One. Uh, you know, you reversed the curse for Kent State. You were the first All American in twenty three seasons for them. Uh, I I can't even tell you how happy I was. And there was two of you that day, you and Nick Badley. Yeah. did it first. Yeah. Wait, you did it first, right? Yeah, you did yeah, it. Yeah, I, I did it first. You did it first. And then he was yeah. shortly thereafter in the blood round, right? That, that, yeah, that was shortly after, that afternoon, I think. Okay. So, yeah, you won in the quarters in the morning. He won that night in the blood round. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah, okay. that night. So, um, 
And you, dude, you beat an NCAA champ. You beat Zach Ray in the quarters. Yeah, which was probably – which, in hindsight, it was – the quarters was the tougher match, in my opinion, than the semis. Like, I think I – think um, if I had to go – I did look at back. Like, I actually had tougher match going into the quarters and the semis. Okay. The <laughs> thing about that is, was it, it was Mark Ellis, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Mark Ellis in the semis. You hear the wild thing about that? What's that? If you had had more looks at him that year, how many times did you wrestle him throughout the year? Never. Zero. I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd never even seen him wrestle. You'd have had two shots at him had they been in the MAC then. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I've, been thinking, I'm, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, dude, if you'd have wrestled him two more times, it would have probably been different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Right, two, well, two, you know, two, Missouri, two, two, Missouri two, two, wasn't in the MAC yet, and now you know they're in the no, MAC. It wasn't. That's crazy. It's like, whatever, man. What a should have could I know that you don't live like that. So, um, oh yeah, I know. I, it, it's like I said, as part of those experiences, you can provide somebody else a little information. That's it. Yeah, but like, oh, I just I'm like, oh, they would have been in the league. That would have been crazy. They'd have been in the MAC. It'd have been different. But um, <laughs> let, so let's rewind. Let's go. So, are you going to take my advice on the marketing? By the way. Yes, I am. We're gonna, I, I, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna chop parts of this and you can have it. You can have it and we can mark it. And it, it, seriously, that's what it's for. You should be marking I appreciate it. That. Thank you. Touch. I'm serious. I'm, you. Not, I'm not joking. Know. That's how I this do. works. Um, but you know, so let's rewind to 14 year old Jermail Porter, 15 year old okay. Jermail Porter. Okay. You tall? Were you tall as a, as a freshman? Uh, I was average height. I wasn't. I wasn't necessarily. Uh, I, I I did hit the growth spurt to the summer of my um, sophomore. Or at the end of my sophomore year, going to junior year. Were you pudgy? That was when I shot. Were you pudgy? Oh yeah, uh, ninth grade, tenth grade, and then that summer is when I shot from like six two to six five. Okay. And then so, that was where it was like just changed. And yeah, you, it's a it's a switch. Probably you figured some just, stuff just like that. Yeah. Just, just like that change, I was like 225 to, to like 265, just like that. What were you as a freshman? What weight were you? 215-ish, like l- below that, barely 215. <laughs> so you were, did you wrestle on the varsity at Firestone at 215? I had one varsity match my freshman year. I got pinned in uh, 19 seconds. I remember exactly clear as day because I got pinned in, in front of all the uh, – these, these girls, I went to our high school. I just got straight up just embarrassed. The dude just pinned me, and he stood up and gave him, like, a double bicep. I was like, oh, this, this is horrible. You got, got party <laughs> done, huh? Yeah, man, I got party on. It was my first time at the gate, and that was my only match as, as a ninth grader. So, okay, so you're, you're, you're pudgy, you're six-foot-ish, right? Yeah, like six foot even. Six foot even, you're 215 mm-hmm. pounds, you're not very solid, you're maybe a little goofy. Yep. Not not really strong either, you know. Yeah, kind of weak. Um, yeah. I figured a lot of your athleticism out. You were in the the band. You you did not do a whole lot of athletics. Um, nope. What 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 was the thing that brought you out for the team at Firestone and Akron? Uh so it's a great story. I was telling people. So um, I was day one of high school. I showed up with my instrument. I'm sitting there, and um, so I'm so I'm the oldest. So you know, as your oldest, you always um, you have to go through and. Do I've experienced first. So I remember I get to my high school and I went to a performing arts middle school. So this is my first time going to public like high school. So I get there, I don't know anybody. And um, I'm just sitting by myself and I'm seeing like all these, all these guys who are bigger, bigger than me and they're sizing, you know, I'm sizing them up. I don't know I'm sizing them up. And I'm like looking around and then maybe two periods into the day, a fight breaks out in the hallway. I'll never forget this. And I'm standing there I'm just seeing this kid just get like body slammed and it's like just getting just he just got manhandled. I'm like thinking like, dude, I better hop into one of these sports real quick because I don't want that to happen. Literally, I don't want that to happen to me. Like, what the fuck am I going mean, to what, what, what am I gonna do with this kid um, if he chose to do this to me? So I remember uh, one of my friends who was also in the bands, but he wrestled and uh, it was just I was like middle of, the, of, the, of like the day. I'm like, hey, man, when does when does wrestling start? And he was like, you're going to wrestle like in the like a I'm like yeah you know I'm, I'm gonna come out you know all right well there's a meeting the next next monday like, all right so i go to the meeting and i'm like unsure about this i'm like i don't know like, i don't really have wrestling shoes but i go to the meeting and then from there i go home and tell my parents like mom dad i'm gonna wrestle they look at me like yeah right so here was the deal there's like all right we're gonna go to play it against sports 
We're going to buy you a $9 pair of wrestling shoes. If you make it the entire season, we'll get you a brand new pair. So I had a pair of $9 Asics that literally looked like they were like from 91. And they just have to be like a size 11 or 12 or whatever I wore. And I put those on. My, my, you know, my pinky toe was coming out the shoe by the end of the time. But, I, but, I, but that was the start. That was the reason why. Essentially, it was I just didn't want to get beat up because I didn't have any older sibling. I, I was the older sibling. So I, I was like, well, this seems like the most logical choice as far as that was, was, a, was the wrestler. Also, the, um, the best athlete of our school was also a wrestler. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to do what he does then because that makes the most sense. So, so you're at uh, – how is Akron uh, Firestone? Is it a good school? Yeah, oh yeah. It was a good school. I mean, we have the International Baccalaureate Program. We have uh, performing arts. So it was real, like, you know, you, you, had, you, had, you had your kids that lived in a neighborhood, and then you had the kids who were commuting there to go for one of those programs, you know. So it was like a, a mix. Magnet. It was a magnet school, right? Uh, yeah, basically. And uh, so I had to – even though that was my home school, I auditioned to get into the program. Which, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was still my home school, but I auditioned to get in there. So you didn't want to beat down in the hallway is what it all comes down to. I did not want to get beat down in the hallway in front of all the people. <laughs> it served you pretty well. It served you pretty well. Huh? Um, it did, yeah. So you get, you get bodied up, just smacked down in front of a bunch of girls. You yeah, man. I remember image. four girls there laughing. But, and then I'm guessing you had some, like, body image stuff that went with that too, right? Oh, yeah. I had body image stuff. I was, like, I was insecure. I was all the stuff. You know, I wasn't. I had I hadn't really done organized sports, so I just didn't know what to you know. I had to figure it out my on my own, and and that's kind of how like it led me down that path. So you get down that path, you get pinned in the only varsity match. How'd you do overall? How did you do overall in your freshman JV schedule? Oh, uh, I was zero and one. Oh, you just wrestled the varsity match. That was it. I so I filled in for um, one of my best friends. Now he was he's a year older, but he was uh, the starting two fifteen. And I filled in for him. I think he had a shoulder injury. And I filled in for a match. And again, I, Ken I wrestled um, was actually um, um, Jermaine Thompson School, Kenmore. They had about three or four good guys. I think Kenmore was Division Two at the time. They had it was a it was a bloodbath for our team the entire time. But I I, I wrestled one of the higher higher ranked kids in the state of Porter Brakeman. And that's why he pinned me in 19 seconds. I mean, it was a it was a massacre. <laughs> but you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I got that 19-second beat down, and that was it for the entire year. Okay. So did you do anything that offseason? Yeah, so that offseason, um, I started lifting weights. As, say, as crazy as that sounds, I got a, I got a, I got a, um, I got a weight set, you know, the, the weights that had, like, kind of like the sand fill them. Yeah. I had plastic. that at home. The plastic. I had, I had those at home. I think we upgraded a little bit. My, you know, my mom and dad got me like the um, iron ones. I, I started lifting a little bit, um, and I came back the next season. I think I was a little bit taller, like six two, and I was like about 230, 240. So and, now you're um, heavyweight. I had you're a, heavyweight yourself. Yeah. So now, 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 now I go to heavyweight. What's that? So you're now yeah. you're heavyweight, and you're a sophomore, and you're a little taller, right? Yeah. A little taller, a little bit stronger. Not much. Not not much, though. I mean, I don't, I don't think as a sophomore I can bench, like, 225 yet. I might be able to. I, I can't, it might have been, like, 225, 230. So I'm still, like, I'm a dude. <laughs> I'm a dude out there that has a little bit more wrestling experience. But I'm, but I, you know, but I, but I'm, but um, I think I, I think I won 20 matches that, that first year. It might have been, like, 20, 20 or 25 matches. Um, and, I, and. Uh yeah, I think it was a twenty five matches. So I, I did all right. That's a pretty that's uh, a huge improvement. That's a huge improvement. Yeah, I went from zero to twenty five. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> and then junior year, so sophomore to junior year. When did the when did that six two to six five thing happen? That was going into my junior year. That was when I started hitting. That was when I started hitting the iron hard every day, twice a day, um, and I just blew up then. And then that's kind of when I figured it out. I was like, okay. I got I got a good handle of what's going on now, and um, that was that was when it started to change for me. Cause I was I mean I didn't have a summer job, um, um, so all I did was lift weights every single day, all day, every day, and that was when I kind of like so I I came back like about probably two seventy five, two eighty, you know, and they were like so that was when the football team was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like I'm going to wrestling practice. That's what I'm doing. Cause at this point I'm bigger than everybody. 
like you know, I, I'm 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 six five, like two eighty. I'm literally bigger than everybody. I'm in the I'm in the weight room, uplifting every single person in that school. Okay, so junior year, how'd it go? Your junior year at Firestone. Uh, I think that I got like thirty plus wins. Um, I should have I should have. Um, so that year again, my problem is inexperience. Um, I my heart wasn't in it. Um, I was the only one that made it to day two of districts. I think I I had I had less than five losses going in. I think maybe I might have had you know. Not the, yeah, less than five. I won everything I went to that year, and then including sectionals and the districts. I don't know what happened. I just, I guess, I just my heart wasn't in it, and I saw everybody just losing. And I'm like, well, I want to go home too. Like, I mean, literally, everybody got my whole team was out. They went to the barbecue the first day. And I was like, <laughs> they were all to a barbecue, huh? Yeah, and I and they're, and they're just waiting on me. I'm just like, so I, I won the first handful of matches, and I, you know, I, I took a loss to um eventual state placer sometime like early Saturday. And I think I just, I needed one to one to place. I think I just, I was, I lost like two to one. I was like a two, like a heavyweight match. I was like a two, one match. And I was like, I'm done with this, you know? So, okay. So so then, so you're gaining confidence, you're growing in size, you're lifting every day. So what what flipped the switch your senior year from you get to the district tournament, it's not going to be barbecue time anymore. Were you just superior to everyone? Were the other guys bad? It was easy for you. What was it your senior year? Um, no, I had a tough. I had a. T- Jimmy was there. I had a tough district. That was um. That so they had got rid of the meat grinders. So everybody who came for the meat grinder was coming out of Perry. So that that was actually a tough um, district. I had to. I had to knock off some guys in route to winning that one. Um, and I think uh, at that point, um, I had more confidence. I knew I was just. I was physically superior to most people. I, I felt like that. I felt like if I could turn it on, I turn it on. I could, I, I could beat anybody, and that's kind of how I just, I kind of, again, my semis match was probably the most challenging match because I upset uh, the projected champion, the semis, Who'd and then I ended up beating um, the kid from Glenville. I don't know if you remember that guy. He was, um, he was, uh, he was thirty and zero. That was what it because he had all the press. He's thirty and zero, and he was just, I mean, he had walked through the entire, you know, everything he'd been in. And I think I was undef- undefeated also going into that and um I was just a no name guy and I think I, I ended up beating him in regulation and he flipped the shit and he tried to fight me and my coach afterwards. And it was weird. It was a weird time. Qualify? Um, did, he huh? qualify? did he qualify for state then? No, he didn't. Um because like I said, he didn't because we had we had some guys there that were returning state qualifier in places that he did he actually didn't he actually took like a fifth. I, I don't know what it was to get out anymore. It was top four get out. At top district. four, yeah. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't make it out. I think he took a fifth place and didn't get out. But he was like a football commit anyway. So he didn't, you know, it was just like, all right, rest is over. I'm going to go play football. You know, that kind of thing. But that was how it went. You know, I, I ended up having a pretty good districts in route to the state. And then you, you win in the semis. Who'd you beat in the semis at the state tournament? <laughs> um, uh, I do not remember his name, but I know he's from probably one of those Columbus schools down there. Um, again, again, it was like one of those things like, um, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> like, I'm happy to be here. I, I think I won. I think I, again, I had a harder match in the quarters. I do know that because I, I, be, I beat, um, oh uh, shoot. I, I beat, I beat a good kid in the quarters to get to the semis and the semis match. I like won like six, one, you know? Okay. So again, it was weird. It was a weird thing. Like, it was anticlimactic. Yeah. It's like, all right, technically you place. Jamel, you've done something that, again, from my high school that hadn't been done in 30 years or whatever it was. Like, okay, we got here. Mission accomplished. And that was kind of like, <laughs> you know, you get to the semis, and then I did that, and it's like finals. Like, uh-oh, here we are. I'm in the I'm in the final. I had never even been to a state tournament prior to that. That's crazy. And then you punched through. So that whole production, I'm, walk, I'm looking around like, where am I? Like, I've never seen these before in my life, you know. I love and it. And I was not ready. <laughs> So it was was it Tony Johnson in the finals your senior year? It was Tony, like the worst possible finals match you could have as a green like newbie guy in a state tournament. It was Tony Johnson on the other side. He pinned you, didn't he? He pinned me. And and he went to Iowa State and played football and tried to do wrestling yeah. both, right? And now yeah. I, I see he like fights in Russia and stuff. I think. Yeah, he fights. Uh, we're, we're actually Facebook fans. He might see this. Uh, 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 I think he fights for one of the organizations, like not like a Bellator. He might fight. I think he does fight for Bellator and like one FC. One, yeah, he's like a split one or something. I think like yeah. a one yeah. championship, one FC, or 
all that, all that stuff. Yeah, he's in like a different promo, like a, probably a good promotion that pays well would be my guess. Right. Sure, sure, absolutely. I know that those ones, like the the the, the one FC is the Asian one. It's the biggest one. Yeah, they pay the national yeah. for a while. I know that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, think, yeah. but okay. So you make the finals, and I remember yeah. Tracy talking to me. I don't, and listen, he's like, "I got that guy. I got that guy. That guy. That guy. He's not any good." <laughs> he's not any good. You got that guy's no good. I remember walking out being like, the guy from Akron's no good. Yeah. And I'm saying this to him. I'd say this to your face. Um, and he's I'm just like, the guy's no good. And he goes, I'm gonna develop him and he's gonna be good. You'll see. And I'm like, I remember heckling him, like saying you're no good. After like, after we'll knowing see. Jimmy as long as I did, he always had that grin. You know what I mean? He's that grin, like he knows something. Like he always he always had that grin when he like early early introductions, like he was getting like, oh, I found something. Like he had that grin yeah. in his look. And now it now it always makes sense. Now looking back, like, oh, okay. No, he defended you, and I was like, because dude, you gotta understand, you were like a tall, you didn't look super athletic. Nope. I'm nope. like, he's just a big body. That guy's no good. Nope. And nope. well, you proved me wrong. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, yeah, was like, and I remember, like, I remember where I was. You know, it was uh, 2009, right? Uh, yeah. When you you beat Zach Ray. Yeah. And I remember it was in St. Louis, right? Yep. And I remember just being like, "This." It, was it 2009? 2009. And I just remember being like, I was so relieved. And then, and then the, and then Badleyon wins that night. I'm yeah, we caught, we caught we caught fire that in that in that, that oh, night. Oh yeah. Which I think was important because me speaking personally, um, nobody had done that. Like, okay, so I'd gone to all the NCAAs, I'd see everybody losing around the twelve. I've i I've seen that before. But I think um seeing someone win, you know, somebody starts that spark. And I think that was like you when you see somebody do it, but, oh I got this. I think that's happened sometimes in dual meets. When somebody has a big win. It kind of inspires you a little bit, like, dude, I, you know, I could, we could do this, you know, and that's kind of like, um, I think if that had happened um, any time years before, I think we would have had. I mean, because we had a lot of good guys come through the program where I was there. Just we just needed a, like, it's possible. <laughs> it's not this. It's well, not this. Didn't did last week get beaten in round of twelve too by Mo? Dude, he ran. Round. He ran. He ran it to Molinero in the round round twelve. Remember? Yeah, he got banana split it or whatever. Oh, dude, like, he got uh, amongst up. other things. <laughs> yeah, he just splits people like a splato type deal, and he, yeah, and he it, yeah. And Drew couldn't come back. It was a six point or a uh, four point near fall then because Drew straight yeah. yelled, and it was like that was a six point move, and it's a six right. point you not move now if you take someone down and put them on their back. But you know, and, and and Drew just couldn't come back. He ended up losing like a nine to seven match or something. To dude, break. I was in the stands watching that. I'm just like, dude, he like because I know how hard he worked, but like you literally ran in like to worst guy to run into. Yeah, you know, if you had to if in the blood round, you know, I was like, oh god. He had Frank Bonner, a freshman Frank Bonner, and Drew was a senior. Right. What a right. You guys had a bunch of guys do that though. Like Danny got beat. Uh, he had, like. You should have. You could have had four All Americans. Danny loses to Bell for Maryland. Danny That's Mitchell right. loses to, to Steve Bell for Maryland. Uh, yeah. Lashway loses to uh, Frank Molinaro. You could have had four or five All Americans that year. Yeah, you know, I forget. Your, your buddy Kilgore completely yeah. underperforms. Exactly. That, uh, and, and that was the shocking thing. I don't know what he was doing, I don't, but I think that was just the newness. You know, I don't know. I think. I don't want to speak for Kilgore, but that was a shocking one. I figured for sure Kilgore's walking out of the top eight that, that first year. I don't I didn't see, you know, there was I mean, there's no reason for him not to. You guys had four guys in the top twelve. I think yeah. Kilgore didn't make the top twelve. He was like yeah, round sixteen or something. He went two and two or something weird. Something weird. He was like a three or four four five seed, maybe? He was he was seated in there. I don't remember what it was, but five for his team. You could have had five All Americans easily. And Chine was at ninety seven. Didn't he make the round of twelve or sixteen? Chine went two or three and two. Yeah, Chine did something too because he upset. He beat the kid from Virginia, um, which was a big win for him. And now that's what kept him alive. I forget who he was losing to, but all all one hundred ninety three pounds of him wrestled ninety seven. He he held he held he held his own for as long as he could. And did Tice qualify with you too? Did Ross Tice? No, qualify? it was it was me, Danny. Um, um, Lashway, Belion, 
Kilgore. Sorry. Dude, and every guy six. is replaced. Kilgore performed the worst. <laughs> I, I was shocked. I remember thinking, I was in like, I forget where I was. I was like, Kilgore lost. Kilgore, <laughs> Kilgore in the first, for the first time in his life was the worst guy on the team. <laughs> Uh, he waited. He waited to the NCAA to be a freshman. Yeah, perform like a freshman. He waited all, people way all way. year, crunching right. people, twisting their head, crossing he, them. The most important tournament is the one he does the worst at. I, yeah. I didn't understand that either. But you know, it's just like you. You know, you're you'd never been to the state tournament as a senior, and you're like, what is all this, right? Yeah, was, everybody who knows about Ohio in the state tournament, dude, it's it is a a, a production. And I'd never seen him for my life. Dude. It really is. And the yeah. problem that they have is they got all these divisions and there's all these matches and there's just too much going on. Right. I cover it, you know what I mean? And there's 10 sure. minutes going and it's just really hard to, to – and for, it's overwhelming for a fan. For me, I'm just kind of like, ah, whatever now, because we're yeah. going to film every match. Now that was the plan this year to film every match. Okay, sweet, We're going to film every match on every match that nice. they were going to let us. And, you know, it got, it got canceled. Then I think that was lofty. You know, we were at least going to do all the championship matches and then right. on uh, YouTube in chunks, right? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that'd be so cool. You would have had to know what, what mat your person was on and what division they were in. We were going to do Division One, mat six. Okay. 106 to 285, right? And right, right. The camera running with it panned out. Oh, that okay. was, and But you're still going to get to watch it, whereas in the past you just didn't get to watch it. Didn't get to watch it, man. No, and and right. they're not the OHSA is bizarre. They don't have they could just bring a production company in like track wrestling or flow wrestling. Uh -huh. Who would do that for them and they would pay them. And they won't do it? They won't do it. They're in a holding pattern. I don't know. It's like their thing. <laughs> I don't care. Because it's gonna benefit me. So right. you know, that's you. fine. It's not like I'm giving out the secrets to a playbook. It's just No, it's right. Cool. No, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> um but it's wild because you know you, Breaking down barriers is hard to do, man. And I remember yeah. when you did that in 2009, that team you were on, you just weren't the guy I thought I was going to do it. <laughs> I don't think anybody I don't think, I don't think anybody did, but you know what? I, I remember thinking back. So, leading that summer, I remember the guys that were working up. Belion was busting his ass. Um, him and him, him and Danny and, and um, Larry, or Lashaway, um, I think they were – Larry and Danny were living together, and um, they were doing their workouts um, daily. I remember I, – God knows where Kilgore was wrestling in the world. Okay. When you Kilgore, say Larry, you're talking about Drew Lash. Uh, sorry, about, sorry about that. People don't know. Uh, Drew Lash. <laughs> Danny, Danny and Lashaway and Belion was living up there, you know, at, at the time, you know. So they were all staying in the same apartment. And then um, I was down the street in the other apartment, and then Kilgore was somewhere in the world wrestling – somewhere in some sort of summer capacity. But I remember we, we, we trained really, really hard. Had we kept that sort of training maybe the year before and actually taken it seriously, I mean, I think that that would have put us that much further ahead. But that last year, we all kind of were like, yeah, we got to – this is it, man. We got we to gotta, we gotta make it happen. So I, I, I spent a lot of time in the weight room and running and all that kind of stuff, and so did those guys. Those guys probably wrestled more than I did, but I was, but I was training a lot uh, for sure. You know, hey, it prepared you guys for the – you know, it prepared you for your job now. It prepared, Danny's assistant coach at Kent State. Drew's uh -huh. assistant coach and a teacher now. Shine apparently plans parties. I don't know what he does. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a VIP host um, in, in, in Vegas. Um, That's a job. So, uh, That's a yeah. job where that guy probably makes six figures. That's a yeah. job. All right, Chai, Chai, Chai's good at his job. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> he's, good at, he's good at his job. He, hey, he was, he was born to do that job. If you know Chai, he was born to do that job because, you know, that's just what he does. Good for, you know what I mean? That's awesome. Hey, his match against Clarion that I just posted in the last month, how about yeah. that lap drop he hit? Yeah. Dude, I, I can never figure out how he lap dropped everybody. Like, literally, that was, like, his go-to. Like, dudes just thought – because he was smaller. You know, he'd weigh in at – 93, 94, and these crews are struggling to make 97. So they thought that when they would go upper body with him, that they would just be able to boom, you know, just lap drop him. Like he lap dropped him. everybody. He trucked that guy. Right. Um, you know, when you look at it, you guys had a dynamite team, probably, arguably, and I, I wrote this. I was like, that's probably Kent State's best lineup ever. I think you, you, I mean, if you look at even what we had that season and in the future, what, what 
the guys paid out to be that top to bottom. That was probably the best team that we could have put together. And like, if it's an all decade team or all time team, that that probably is the best team, the best version of it, I think. And then 2016 was actually their best finish. Ian yeah. sixth, De Palma took fifth. Yeah. And the only other year they've had two All Americans is with you and um, right. you and Badlian. Right. So it had to be the 2000 to 2010 versus the 2010 to 2020 team. You know, that's the, the two decades. You'd have, to, you'd have to pin them together. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy to look at it now. Um, we're talking about a program, you know, when Andresi took control, he took over. He was the interim coach. I graduated in 2003. So 2002, 2003 was the last year for Frank Romano. Uh-huh. And, and they, Jimmy's the interim head coach. Romano leaves. Right. Jimmy's the head coach. You were a part of that culture change in those Friday night practices and those Saturday night practices, weren't you? Uh, yes. The very first year, so Jimmy's first year at the helm would have been 2004 or no. I was the first class. 03, 04 but, was his interim year, and then 04, 05 was his first year as the actual head coach. Okay. okay. There you go. Did, were they doing the Friday night practices to keep guys out of the bar when you were there? <laughs> we were doing, uh, do you know, I don't remember. I know for sure we were doing Saturdays. I don't know about Fridays. Yeah, because the culture change is hard, man. It's real hard. <laughs> it's real hard. It was real. No, what? No, he we wasn't doing Fridays. He he didn't do Fridays because I remember being out Fridays, but we didn't do Fridays. But he Saturdays, did, we did Saturdays. His first two or three years, he would do these Friday night midnight practices and these Saturday night midnight practices. Yeah, oh, no, he did. Halloween was a six a.m. Sunday was a holiday. The he Sunday kept that. Halloween was a six a.m. Did they do that? Yeah he, yeah, he kept that. So, dude, that's a part of culture. It's part of culture change. Yeah, but we still, we still. Uh, I, I can speak firsthand. I know for sure we threw a party and just woke up and went, went and did it. <laughs> went, went, up, went up, went up and ran, 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 ran the stairs like we were just willing to accept our, accept our fate, whatever the fate was that 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 day. I was ready for it, but yeah, he tried it and we came up. We answered the bell. I remember that. Okay. So, you know, you're a part of this. You're you're a huge. I I was gonna get shirts made. Reverse the curse. When you yeah, American, I was that'd like, been that'd been sweet. What's that? That'd be sweet. I said that'd been pretty sweet. Because you did. I mean, it was. Yeah. Penn State was a joke for twenty plus years. Oh yeah. I was there with really good guys, man. I was there with guys. Anthony Ralph was there when I was there. Brent Thompson was there. Nick Magistrelli, who was a round of twelve guy. Nick Namath, round of twelve guy. You know, Dolph Ziggler, a.k.a. Dolph Ziggler. Like, Dolph Ziggler. Guys were really good. We just didn't live. When I talk about the old culture. Right. We were, we were the old culture. Right. You know? Right. And that, 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 uh, that, so that was hard to probably break because you look at just the quality guys that went to Kent, you know, that, that was, you know, looking back on it, it was like, man, there was some really, really good wrestlers that, that were there. It's just the culture was, you know. I don't know if there's as many distractions at Kent as there are were then as there are now. I think they're cleaned up. I think, I think you got to be kind of a brainiac, not brainiac. I think you got to be a lot smarter to go to Kent now. But it was uh, it was a night it was night and day. I think it's it's crazy. But any regrets going 15 minutes away from home? Is there any regrets in your mind? No, 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 none. What that, I mean, that was the best best possible situation for me, regardless of what my training partner is going to be at other places and. This Kemp, I, I wanted I wanted to go to Kent probably more than anything, you know. That was that was that was a good deal for me. Uh, when you look at it now, um, you know you're this kid with body image problems. You're in the orchestra. Yep. You've ever uh, pictured that you would have taken it, been an NCAA Division One All American, played for the Patriots and the the Chiefs. Would you have ever thought that? You're getting bodied at, in 19 seconds in front of girls. You're embarrassed. You probably yeah. built poorly in the singlet. Like, would you have ever yeah. thought that was going to happen for you? Uh, you know what? I I kind of I that's what I was going for was just to um to for that to work out. I I I, I was fingers crossed. I'm like I keep working. Maybe this will pan out. So I was going for it. Um, I just didn't know how far. I didn't know. Because I just wasn't, you know, I didn't have um, any sort of like, I guess, predecessors to let me know like what's possible far enough. I just took it like a year at a time. Like, but I knew I saw progress. I saw progress. I saw progress. But I didn't know how far I could go. You know, honestly, to be completely 
honest with you. Like the whole thing's been just like, just a, like, all right, next stop, we're going here. Next stop, we're going here. Next stop, you know. So I, I had no idea. Okay, so now, now <laughs> we have, now we have, we have Jermail Hour. You're about to, you're about to train. <laughs> soon. Um, Ask. We're we're in strange times, man. Sure. You're, you're a small business owner. Yeah. Um, I, I look at it daily, and your, your rage is pretty out there with this whole COVID nineteen situation and the shutdown yes. of, the, of the economy in Ohio. And um, you, you're not. You don't mince words. <laughs> literally, let's argue is how you start every day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to take it on, man. That, that's kind of how I, I, like to, I could look at it. You're losing money, but you're still training people. Your gym's mm -hmm. not open. Mm -hmm. I remember you posted a video of a guy out front. You were working out in your gym, mm -hmm. and a guy was videoing you, right? Yeah, yeah. You were, yeah. That was like all-time rage level for you, I think. Uh, yeah. You know what? And the feedback was like, dude, you should go out there. You should have went out there and charged them. And I, for a split second, I thought about, like, but I didn't know, I didn't want to bring any more attention to myself or the facility by me, you know, doing that. <laughs> but for a split second, I was like, that's it. I almost, I almost went out there. And that was, um, that was in March when that happened. So, you know, it's just, it's just wild, wild, wild times in there as far, as far as that. But, um, you know, what are you going to do, man? You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to be creative, be innovative. And, you know, you can't, you can't quit, you know, as far as that goes. That's all. I mean. It sucks, but that's, that's kind of how I sum it up as I can't quit, you know. What are you doing right now? Tell me what this workout's going to be. I, I've actually seen some workouts where it seems like you're there and you must be doing the social distancing. Uh, uh, yeah, I, dude, I've been in parks. I've been in front of the buildings. I've been um, in, in certain parts of my building. I have – so it's set up as – it's, um, like, not partitioned, but I have two storefronts that I'm able to work out, so it's multiple rooms. In okay. within of it, um, so you have like a two thousand square foot, and you have a thousand, you know. So we're able to kind of you know split ourselves up there. So I, I've been doing some stuff, um, and it's just kind of like, well, um, not incriminating myself, but it's like, yeah, I'm social distancing, I'm this, that, and the other, but work has to be done, you know. You um, are you guys gonna survive this? Do you think? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I know. I, you know what? I'm 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 more upset for the places that won't. Um, for us, our members have been really, really cool because uh, we have um, adult group sessions, and a lot of them were like, and we've been providing content. We like I say, I go out, I do group sessions out the park, so we're giving back value and still bringing in stuff. But a lot of them were able to hang on to their um, their reoccurring memberships through the um, through this time, which has been really helpful. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. More upset for places that won't bounce back because I see how tight the margins are, man. They're they're tight. You know, for a lot of these things that were shut down, I mean, you can't take, um, you can't take too many weeks of this, especially months of this, before you know you reach the point of no return. What is your, uh, what's our open update in Ohio? I, is it May, May thirtieth, May thirty first? What's your open update? Dude, I don't even know. They're opening bars and, dude, as a, a old Dante Reini, Reini, me and him talk back and forth. Um, he owns like um, six gyms, doesn't he? He owns like dude, he owns. Dude, he's got like five of them. Yeah, if you want, I'm not angry. He's angry. Um, well, do you blame? I, him? I don't blame I, him. Yeah, I, I think he's. I think he does not probably as vocal as I am. But dude, we talk pretty like weekly. <laughs> and, uh, he owns like five. But I think, um, I think it's sometime. You know, gotta be. With, I heard Memorial Day, possibly, but it's just hearsay. I, you know, if you're opening bars and dining in on the twenty first. There's no reason not to open at least smaller facilities like 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 myself. Not like a Planet Fitness. Okay, whatever. But us, you know, we don't we don't do the same sort of volume, and everything is by appointment. You know, so it's different. It's way different. So is this one you're going to do a virtual one after this, or is it going to be an outside one, with you in person? Uh in person. In person. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't want to like make you look like a tinfoil crazy person, but like, okay. how much of this do you feel like is overblown paranoia? How much do you feel like the numbers might be inflated? What do you, what do you feel right now, Jermail? Like, what do you feel? People are doing. Uh, <laughs> so here's what this is what I think. I think the validity of a um, potential viral or a viral infections were real. I think the people who are 
um, dying or people who um, come in contact and get really sick are completely real. I think it is a virus regardless. I think the problem is um, my advocacy is for immune system health and maintenance. I mean, our bodies are pre, our bodies are designed to be able to withstand, you know, onslaught of, you know, invaders is what we'll call them. And if you have a diet that's rich in micronutrients, vitamin A through D and K and all that kind of stuff, if you're exercising, if you're utilizing, you know, your lungs essentially are muscle, muscle too. So, you know, people are worried about respiratory issues, but if you don't use them or, you know, if you're not predisposed to, you know, any sort of bronchitis or asthma, then yeah, you should be worried. And the whole point is being sedentary puts you more at risk. Being unhealthy puts you more at risk. So it's kind of like in a, in a dumbed down way, not that immunocompromised aside, it's like, well, wait a second, you guys are sitting out here and smoke and eat like, you know, shit and not exercise. And I got to shut down and stay in the house because you're the one at risk. Like, that seems a little self-inflicted when you put it in those terms. And, you know, my mother's immunocompromised too. And I just went and saw her this week, but she, she has a very, very strict diet. She exercises and she keeps most things at bay. So it's not, I'm not speaking um, incapacitantly. I'm just telling you facts of facts. And I think they should be bringing that message. What can we do against this in the interim is the message that should be being preached now. Okay, this virus is here. How do I defend myself from it? Not just sitting in a house waiting for somebody to come save me. Yeah, you, Unpopular, popular opinion. I get it, bud. You post a lot of, uh, of videos of your meals. You do a lot of meal yeah. prep, I can see. I do, yeah. Uh, and and, and you know, here's the other thing about you. you. You get up to 330 and 340 and 350 pounds. Yeah. So it's, it's yep. not like you're like, you know what I mean? You're a big guy. You consume yeah, it'll, a lot. It'll, it'll fluctuate. I, I fluctuate. It depends upon like what I'm doing, my training protocols and programming. Like, you know, sometimes I get, I get on the train or the game train. I want to lift and be strong and maintain a 500 pound bench press. And some days I want to be able to run, you know, not like the wind, but run and be more pliable and be, you know, and kind of give the joints a rest. So I'll, 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 I'll drop. It just depends on where my focus is, you know, in that, that year there. What are you now? How much are you now? You know, I don't know. You know, I, I, I had the injury, so I had a lot of lower body atrophy. So I'm not, I haven't stepped on a scale in a while. I'm probably sitting like probably like 350-ish, 340-ish, which for me at six and a half, six, seven and a half, that's probably 17% body fat roughly. Oh, my God. Give or, give, 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 give or take. How do you feel? Huh? How do you feel? Body wise, um, no. How do you? Are you I, like, oh, I'm gonna pass still. out? How do you feel? Oh no, 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 yeah, no. I still, I, I, I feel fine. And like optimum for me is probably three thirty. I think I'm uh, around thirteen percent body fat at three thirty. So yeah, and so I posted that. I, I, I posted my um my my body fat um when I did like so I got down to three twenty three two years ago. And I was like I was sub thirteen percent body fat. Or visible six pack, but that just shows like I'm not getting to three three hundred pounds if I maintain, you know, this current skeletal muscle structure and then my current training like just doesn't happen. I'm just I'm too dense, you know. I'd have to do nothing, and that's kind of what happened to me in my lower body. Just I haven't been able to do very much as far as lower body, but I get back into it. What was your injury? Uh, I had a patellar tendon rupture and a IT band rupture at the same time. Cause is it because you're such a gigantic human, or what was it? No, I was in. I was actually in the middle of an unsupervised lift, and uh, it was just. It was just. It was just my time. Come on, man. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was my time. Dude, how old are you now? Thirty-three. I'll be thirty-four in two weeks. You are thirty-three to be thirty-four. Okay, awesome. I know. Hey, I know you got a workout coming up. You got a person there waiting. Yes. Do you got anything else for me? Dude, I, I love these I love these videos and podcasts you do, man. I watch them, so it, I would thank you for having me on. Um, so I'm excited, dude, and uh, I like I like talking wrestling and stories and stuff like that. So you know, I, I, I'm 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 happy with it. Oh 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 oh! I gotta send you. Do you have any? Do you have any? Defense? No, I, I don't have any of that. I gotta get you some. Listen, they got wipes. They got this oh, is like the bar. Idea. I got the new bar. This is the new brand yeah. too. If you look, it's the new brand. These are the guys yeah. I, I work with. They're great partners. Them yeah. and uh, Barbarian Apparel, Saspi. Um, okay. And I know, Will, I, I'm going to have to get you. I'm going to get you some of these. I know you want them. I know yeah, you I'm not gonna, those. I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, sure. I love it. 
You'll never there, listen. You're never gonna wear a, a mask, are you? Never. No, no. It's gotta be something <laughs> like you know. It doesn't even bother serious. me. Like there's gotta be. What doesn't that? even bother me. It doesn't even bother me. No. It's. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I I, yeah. Just, I just don't care. But um, when we get where are you guys right now? Are you in Lakewood? Cleveland. Uh, I'm in Cleveland. My 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 gym is in Cleveland. You're West Side though, aren't you? Yep, West Side. Okay. Yep. They just moved. The Ben Soap just left. Um, they just left Lakewood. They just left the Screw Factory over there on Athens Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Right where by they, the corner of like uh, Warren Bunts. Oh, that's literally right over by me. Yeah, no, they were probably within a mile of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna get you some though. We'll get you. Are you a bar or a body wash man? I'm a body wash man, but I got the gym. I got showers here. I might. I probably use the bar. You know. Yeah, we'll get you. A, a, too. Um, we got all. Yeah, okay. they, they hook it up. So I'll come by when we when you guys open up. I'll try and come by and do some maybe some promotions with you or something. Yeah, man, that'd be cool. Come by, and check us out. That'd be that'd be awesome. All right, train your guys up or girls up. Yeah. Whoever you're training up, Jermail yes, Porter, sir. NCAA wrestling all American, former NFL practice player. I appreciate the time, brother. Thank, Thank you. you. And. Uh, I wish I, I I liked your rant. Your your rant wasn't angry enough, but I'll take it. Uh, yeah, okay. You no, know instead of coffee, beer next time. You'll get you'll get all the good stuff. All right, Jamel. Thanks for the time. Good luck to you guys. All right, take it easy. Thank you.